Thanks for listening to Bloom TV's podcast, where we interview and get the inside scoop on world-leading experts in the flower industry. I'm your host, Devin Kearns. Learn more about all of our experts at bloomtvnetwork.com. Let's get started with today's special guest. Welcome back to Bloom TV's podcast. I'm here with Teresa Eoff of Figure 8 Events. 12 years ago, she started her journey in floral design. She braves the wedding market with her floral designs and her incredible craft and creativity. She has the Flower Lovers Box coming soon. It's a subscription that's not just about flowers, it's a, but it is about all things floral. And we'll dive into that here in a little bit. She's a big contributor and cares for uh, her friend's nonprofit that is Camp Journeys for Kids. She's got a true passion in her life for flower therapy, which we will also dive into here. It's one of the main passions in her life. And this passion for flower therapy came from your own experience on how flowers helped you heal. Will you share a little bit about that story? And I guess first and foremost, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I can jump back a little bit. Um, before I entered flowers, I was kind of um, working all over the place. So I worked in higher education. I worked in aerospace. Um, and while I was working at a university, my friend was like, hey, let's take some flower classes. So I would take nightly flower classes with her at the university after we would get off work just for fun. So segue later, maybe about six years, I find myself in the aerospace industry. And um, I don't know if you know, in 2009, when the recession came and uh-huh. everyone got laid off, so our company closed and I found myself in flowers. So I was um, designing flowers to sustain my income um, and just dabbling. I didn't really know what I was doing. I just remembered the classes that I took for fun and that kind of sustained me for two full years before I bounced back and went into the employment market. Um, So while I was again working in higher education and uh, one day I went to work and had a sore throat and um, drank my tea from Starbucks and I thought I would be fine and I completely was not fine. So the next day my husband had to rush me to emergency and they instantly took me and I was on a machine upside down and it was just a big blur. I didn't know what was happening and I was in ICU for about five days with sepsis. Um, from strep that went into my bloodstream. So it was pretty traumatic. Um, And I think I had about, I think they said a cocktail of about 90 antibiotics that went through my body before they could find what it actually was. So following that recovery over the next few months, I just wasn't the same person anymore. Mm -hmm. I wasn't able to, I don't know, lead all of the things I was leading at work. It was just a lot. And my husband was like, well, I feel like you were happier when you were designing flowers. <laughs> um, even though like I was laid off that time and I was just trying to make ends meet. He's like, I think you were happier. And I think um, we should just go for it. You could just do it full time. And that'll be something that's not so much pressure. So we thought <laughs> not so difficult. Um, and here we are. So what are we, five years later, um, full-time floral designer, wedding floral designer, and I love it. It's a lot of fun. Um, I still get to work my brain, exercise my muscles, so I didn't lose that part of an employment, but at least like I have a passion for what I'm doing because mm. um, I love working with flowers. So um, that's kind of how I landed here now in this space and what's propelling me forward to continue working with flowers. So you took off in aerospace and landed in flowers. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. And it's just crazy because I never thought when I would take those classes with my friend that I would be doing this. It never was like, oh, this is something you can do as a career. I never thought that. So it was wild. Well, and what I love is that 
you listened to that call and and your and your husband heard it for you as well right I mean yes I, yes I, it, it kind of was like a, um I was like are you sure I should be doing this um and it was just a leap of faith. It literally was a leap of faith because there was no prior conversation about this. There was no planning for <laughs> financials about this. It definitely was just listening to the call. Yeah. It's such a special thing that I hear over and over and over in, in this industry, particularly that, um, <clears throat> you know, there's, there is this idea of what we think our path is and then nature steps in and in particular as i've dove really deep into the flower industry the flowers um call you and there's an actually a really um, amazing new writer that's joined the um team here at bloom tv and she's actually talking about that in this article that she's writing it's it's so well done how we think we use flowers and how we bring flowers into our world. And she's like, no, 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 no. These flowers are infinitely wise and they actually call us. They yeah. speak to us, they use us, they get us to help pollinate as well as other animals, as well as other insects. They're an intelligence that we don't quite understand yet. And this entire article talks about this. And I was like, wow, I mean, it just blew my mind I was like nope that's very true and I hear it over and over all the experts were called into this and it's almost like life was going to disappear over here and make you do this and it didn't matter how and in your case you know um, it, it showed up in some really unique forms in terms of you needed to heal mm -hmm. and and on top of that, you needed to, to discover what the real message was. And thank God you had um, this whisper from nature and a whisper from your husband going, maybe, you know, I, li I liked you over there. I liked you when you're <laughs> smiling and happy on that side of the equation. Why don't, we, why don't we see what that looks like? And how cool to have that kind of support. That's, that's a rare thing, too. Yes, I agree. I agree. I'm happy for the push. And I definitely think that the flower is called me because it's literally like in the care of the flowers that I learned so many lessons and mm -hmm. I apply them to life. And then I tell my kids, well, do you know that, well, if this flower can last in hot water, hot boiling water, like what you can bloom too, like regardless of what's happening around you. So they're always like, <laughs> there's, I always say I, there's a class I want to put together called Lesson from, Lessons from the Flowers because oh, they yeah. really teach you so many things. And as a floral designer, I mean, we use them to make pretty things, but we also gain a lot of lessons in just taking care of them and how to achieve that look. So it's been just an amazing journey, I would think. So if I selfishly, on behalf of Bloom TV, call you out on maybe instead of making a class around that, you actually turn that into a video series for us. Definitely. <laughs> I really absolutely could. I mean, it's just the more I learned about them, I'm like, wow, when you were saying that they bring us, they are living and breathing organisms. So yeah. I can totally see them using me to get them to do this, <laughs> this and this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because I don't know, and people would say it's just tricks of the trade, but I don't think it is. It's really just being intentional about what kind of flower I'm using and knowing its properties and what makes it do the things that I want it to do or what makes it do, makes me do the things it wants me to do. You know? <laughs> that sounds more right. Yeah, yeah it's just ama yeah. It's an amazing world of flowers. I love it. It's incredible. So let's go back to this because I want to, I want to get a little more extracted out of this story here. So, so you're in the healing process the suggestion is brought to the table. Um, maybe happiness is the key here to, to, to more healing for you. And maybe flowers are the thing that are really speaking to you to bring about this happiness. What, what unfolded in that journey? What did you find as you started 
choosing this path of the flower? So um, my my grandmother is native was Native American. Um, she passed away a couple of years ago, but mm-hmm. so I always had this connection to nature. So a lot of um, remedies that are passed down through my family are very nature focused. Mm-hmm. So I've always and I was the one to embrace it the most, I think. So I've always been just a natural, holistic type person. So and introspective and spiritual. So I always was able to put, you know, whatever I'm doing connected to my heart somehow or connected to how it makes me feel. (laughs) Um, So I've always been that type of person. Um, So when um, I began the flower journey, it was more so, okay, well, I know, for example, um, eucalyptus. So my grandma would always pack me like bags and bags of eucalyptus leaves. And I never understood why like she would would visit her and she would pack them for me and be like okay take this with you to college so I literally have in my storage right now just bags of dry eucalyptus leaves um so me like wanting to understand like why would she give me that so I started to explore more about the symbolism behind the flowers so um I know eucalyptus represented abundance so she was trying to tell me you know take this with you and um you know, pray, pray for an abundant life, like all of these things that you desire in your heart will come to you. Mm -hmm. So it started kind of with that, um, with, okay, let me work with what I know. Like I know, you know, I know how to design, I know how to make pretty things, but I also, even in my business and when I design for a client, I want to know how you want it to feel. How do you want the event to feel? So I work with what I know. I, I know like, what kind of flowers will bring this, evoke this to your event. Um, And then I kind of just went from there. So it was pretty easy for me to just segue into flowers, I feel like, because I've always been this person that's just like, okay, well, it's all about feeling anyway. So if you want me to make it feel a certain way, I can do that. You know, that resonates with me. Um, And the flowers just help with that. So understanding like what they represent, you know, how they smell, what kind of aroma or ambiance they bring to a space, Um, all of that I already kind of knew. So it just felt like I was at home when I finally got into this um, space. And then when I started to meet other floral designers um, through social media, it kind of, they spoke my language. So it kind of made me feel like, okay, I'm not this person that's just (laughs) talking to flowers and talking about flowers. Um, it kind of just makes sense when I talk to them, like, yeah. you know, I can use this and this and this to create this feeling and create this look. So it's more of an experience, not so much just a photo for the client, you know, yeah. or in their guests. So that's kind of just, I think, my nature. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it sounds like it. it sounds mm-hmm. like it runs in your blood and and is a major part of who you are. Mm-hmm. That's, like, that's incredible. So before we dive into um, the flower therapy piece of this, which I'm, I'm really excited to have a conversation around, what are a couple of these messages that you've received from the flower that, that have really just kind of stuck with you or your family? Um, so I, w- I, I always talk about hydrangeas because... Um, to me, they're so magnificent. Like I, I love that um, the idea of water being life, right? Water brings life to everyone. And I love that they are just water stingy. Like they want all the water, give it here. I want it, I want to drink it from the top. So they drink it from the top of the flower to the bottom of the flower. I like, I think that's amazing because, and it's so big and full. And that's how I see life. Like it's just so abundant and it's a flower that is abundant. It takes up all the space, (laughs) you know, and we use it for so many things. And I think that it's ironic that if I put it in boiling water, it's going to get bigger and fluffier and bloom. And the idea of life just being like a hot mess all the time, you know, it's so hectic. It's so hot. Things just coming at you. And the fact that you can continue to bloom in that, I think is a very powerful message from the hydrangea. You yeah. know? 
um, and then making sure that you're fed from all ends. So the way that it gets its water and just soak, soaks it up and keeps it, um, I just think it's amazing. And then the, the instant you take it away from its life source, then it just shrivels. <laughs> interesting. Um, so yeah, I think that's one of my messages and it's super powerful for me. So I um, try to, like, whenever I'm giving my kids a lesson, like I'll demonstrate and I'll show them and they think it's so cool. And it's not the only flower that can do that. But I, for me, it just represents abundance because it's so big and full. Yeah. And I just want them to know, or anyone that I'm talking to, like you can continue to bloom and blossom and share your light. Um, regardless of what's going on, you know, as long as you're well fed and you're getting yeah. everything you need, you know. Yeah, it feels like the message there is that I'm that I'm receiving from from your description here is the hydrangea the hydrangea is not afraid of being big, being full, and it doesn't apologize for wanting to receive what it needs. Everything it needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's I mean that's incredible <laughs> I'll, I'll take that with me forever <laughs> yeah. and, and I think we need that message out in the world for sure I think you know a lot of our stickiness in society ironically isn't a, 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 of our fear of giving it's our fear of receiving it's our fear of playing big it's our fear of um, shining our light and and or feeling like we will be judged because of because of uh, it mm -hmm. and, and because of what you need or require yeah, to yeah. do that mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's well there we go i knew i was asking that question for a reason <laughs> perfect mm -hmm. so uh we'll save we'll save the other ones that's a big message and i definitely want to see that one going deeper in a in a video and we'll save the others for um um for bloom tv hopefully okay. crossing yeah, let's fingers. Do it. Let's do it. Uh, all right perfect so when it comes to this, you've been in design and now you're discovering this real passion to bring to the world um, floral therapy, right? And, and I'd love to know what this looks like for you now. And then we'll dive into to, to where you see this going for us and the world and, and what you want to create. Okay. Um, so... For me, designing with flowers, like not for a wedding, <laughs> even for a wedding though sometimes, is very therapeutic. And I think it's um, not so much the, you know, idea of making something out of nothing, mm -hmm. but also just seeing the flower, the colors go together, smelling the a mixture of aromas and, you know, knowing how that can impact someone's mood or just the intention of what you want the arrangement to become on the once you're com once it's complete or if you're giving it to someone what you want it to how you want it to impact that person mm -hmm. you know um so i think that's the part of therapy that i think people miss you know in the flowers mm -hmm. um because it's not so much i mean you you go to a therapy session you talk and someone's hearing you and you talk back but this is also a way to express you know, what you're feeling or, you know, just get it out there. And the beauty about flowers is they're gorgeous regardless. So there's no anticipated outcome. There's no, like, it needs to look like this. I mean, when we're designing for, you know, formal event work or a shoot or a backdrop, or that's different. But when we're designing with the intention of just healing ourselves or increasing our mood um, or boosting our mood or, boosting someone else's mood it's just different it's just a different feeling of knowing it's going to be beautiful regardless and I think people need to hear that <laughs> that it's going to be beautiful regardless because yeah. we get so caught up in you know where does it go it's not perfect I messed up yeah. you know did I do it right how long is it going to last um, it, the therapy thing for me really came from people saying oh I'm just not a flower person or I just don't like flowers yeah. and if you come to me as a wedding designer and say, I don't really like, I don't care what the flowers is like, that's like, a, oh, I hate it. <laughs> I can't <hear> people say that. <laughs> that just triggers you into action. My goal is I'm going to show you why you need to like them because they give us so much life. And 
I don't know. I just feel like people miss it. They just miss, or they say, oh, it's just going to die in a couple of days, but that's fine. That's what makes them amazing. Cause they give literally yeah. everything that they can possibly give before they go, mm-hmm. you know, and even sometimes you can revive them and mm-hmm. knowing that you revived it and brought it back to life. There's something beautiful in that. Um, so that's kind of where my thought process went when I was like, oh, this needs to be like a thing. Like people yeah. need to know, like there's therapy in this. Like there's ways that you can apply this in every aspect of your life. If you see beyond just, oh, it's just a bunch of flowers. You yeah. know? Mm-hmm. And it's not the end result, right? It sounds like it's the journey. So what I'm yeah. hearing you say is, is the overarching process and how it is therapeutic is through senses right you've got the obvious which is sight sound or sorry sight touch uh smell Mm -hmm. but even 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 hearing because what you shared earlier is is if i listen to it it will it has a message and and we you know i've heard a lot of um uh florists and designers and people working with nature and flowers and gardening um Anna Galena is a good example of this uh, it, she's she's constantly saying the flower tells me where it wants to be it shows me where it wants to be right and so while it may not be a vocal although I don't know um uh it's not speaking to me in terms of how we think but mm-hmm. maybe there is some sort of thing I'm listening for so it's bringing in that sense and if I am present in that right. moment with the flower and all else dissolves, not only can I hear it, but I, I'm, I'm in the most important space I can be. <laughs> right, right. Uh, I'm in the most important space I can be, which is this moment. Right. The only moment there is, right? And there is so much healing in the present moment. Yes, and I think um that's another reason why it's therapeutic is because you're just sitting and you're forced to be still and I always tell people like set the tone for just being able to be present even if it's music the flowers respond to music if it's you know whatever it is just set the tone Mm. it's something interesting about sitting still right Mm -hmm. even from the time that you're a kid like it's so hard to just sit still and I think um, when you find yourself in those moments where you have no choice but to sit still, that's where like so many things happen, so many messages come through, and it's just the piece yeah. of it all. Yeah. And I think um, that's kind of like my mission. Like I want people to see the peace in the flowers, yeah. you know. So yeah, it's it's interesting. I feel like there's a there's a whole broader and global message of that stillness being brought to us through a lot of different variants through um covid forcing us into nature because we can't see our people and pulling us out of the busyness of life because we can't go to work and and to to find that stillness to sit in that stillness um it isn't easy but but so important and to be honest you know, in, in all of the conversations I've had and in, in with business leaders and just people I love and, and random people that I meet and even in your story, right? There was busyness and maybe I wasn't taking enough time to be still. And all of a sudden I found myself in dis-ease Mm-hmm. And the disease forced me into stillness, and then I found my thing. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And that kind of makes me feel like we are flowers because. Oh wow. <laughs> because if you notice, like water, sunlight is so necessary, yeah. even for us, and just to sit and enjoy it. Like, like yeah. a lot of people don't realize. Hey, I just need to sit in just yeah. in the moment so I may I for myself make it a point to sit in the sun mm. for five to ten minutes a day just because I feel like that does something for your your body it does something for you to have to bloom for yeah. you to just relax you know and take it all in 
you know, and I feel like the flowers do that all the time, right? They're just sitting in the sun or sitting in the elements or taking it all in. And it's kind of grounding for me. So I think that if we just use them as an example, it kind of will help us get through the busy, get through the disease, disease, you know, Um, just following their lead. I think they're so amazing. Like, and I think somebody has to be able to point that out for people, you know, because they can't always see it, you know. That's right. I'm I'm a total nerdy visual person, by the way. And what I just saw was (laughs) you out in the sun, in this meditative, I am a hydrangea and your, hu- <laughs> and your husband's pouring all the water all over you <laughs> and you're just as big as you possibly can be. <laughs> what is a funny reenactment? Oh my God. Uh, so great. <laughs> I'm a hydrangea and he's just, <laughs> I am as big as I possibly can be. <laughs> well, there's, there's like the symbolism is there, you know, like it, it can mm-hmm. so apply to everything. Um, sometimes we just need fresh air, some water, yeah. and a little bit of sunlight, you know, yeah. and some fun, right? Like, yes. Man, I'll say this again and again and again, and I think it's one of my core messages on this planet that has been shown to me through nature and through the power of plant medicine is how crucial it is for us to lighten up, be less dense, stop taking this game so damn serious, because the lighter we can get especially in moments where it isn't dense and we can move into play and move into fun it will right it will raise that vibration for everybody and yeah you don't you don't you don't see these flowers all stressed out trying not to lose a a petal (laughs) it's just just there here i am yeah so good so within the therapeutic side of this you had an idea come to you um, on how you could probably bring some of the floral healing to the world. Uh, and it came through the, the idea of this box, the flower lovers box. Will you tell us a little bit more about that? Um, so like I told you, it, it really bothers me when people don't like flowers. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you <laughs> or let the flowers show you. Yeah, so I I started off just connecting with my friends who also like flowers just to see what kind of product they can put together with flowers that we can just share with the world, just kind of to show the world what flowers do. So um, like one of my friends makes rose water, I have another friend who um, does the shower bundles um, with eucalyptus, Um, just so people can gain a better appreciation for flowers. So I was thinking of putting together uh, eventually a subscription box, but that's what the Flower Lovers box is, just um, a collaborative effort and also to support other businesses um, like myself and to get them out there so people know what they're doing. Um, There's another uh, vendor that I, I love her products she makes um, herbal, I don't know, for lack of a, a better word, like smoking, smokable teas. Yeah. So, um, cause, because there's so many other flowers that you can use medicinally yeah. aside from cannabis um, that are, he have healing properties. So she makes teas that you can soak in, you can sip or you can also smoke them. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of her products was in the flower lovers box, just so that people know um, all of the healing properties of flowers, how you can incorporate them in your everyday life um, <clears throat> and have better a better appreciation for them. So how great is that? Yes. What a great way to share all the experiences with other people's creativity around flowers too right yes. there's just mm-hmm. so many ways to either be healed by or ideas or ways it's the it's the coolest thing is you know somebody who i wasn't opposed to flowers i just didn't know how much i'd love them until you know meeting monica and her and and i launching this whole bloom tv platform that it is a niche that feels like we understand what the floral world is right it's events it's design or it's bouquets and i give you the bouquet because i love you right yeah, it right. is so much deeper than 
it is, it is the vastest thing I've ever experienced in my life. So it's so it neat is. that you're sharing that with the world. And I think I think it's an I don't know underestimated power that this world has. I mean, flowers. I don't think anything is done by happenstance. Like everything has a purpose. So yeah. why would we be here with so much of this? beauty if they're not meaningful or yeah. meant to be impactful um so i think that if we get past the oh it's just pretty for my backdrop yeah. <laughs> um, or oh i just want it for the design like think about how it's impacting everybody who came to your event you know to be surrounded by all of this beauty like it's boosting the mood it's creating the environment setting the tone it's not just the aesthetic you know <laughs> you know um so I don't know that's kind of what where I'm going with the flower I just feel like I've made it my mission to where anytime I hear someone say I'm not a flower person oh I'm gonna make <laughs> it a flower so um that's kind of where I'm wanting to go with the flower lovers box um and then continue to make it a collaborative effort because there are so many creative people doing amazing things with flowers that we just don't hear about yeah, that's so neat. What a great concept. So I know we're going to have plenty of other conversations, and I know that um, all of our viewers are going to be super excited about the content you're you're bringing to, to Bloom TV. Do you have a, a little taste of what you're bringing other than the um, the the messages from the flowers that that uh, you're going to create as well? Um, so for now, I have the mood boosting um arrangement so how to boost your mood how to just simply accessorize um, for the day with flowers if um just simple tricks on how you can add, just incorporate flowers into your everyday life without it being like so overwhelming yeah. or for moments when you just want to sit in design like how you can use the different colors to boost your mood um, the different smells um, i have a video on um, adding essential oils to your arrangement mm -hmm. um, so that you do like mm -hmm. make the smell of the arrangement even more impactful yeah. Um, so yeah so just uh there's all so many things i have lots of ideas um <laughs> definitely want to add the lessons from the flowers because yeah. i think that would be super beneficial yes. and if we can get that message out i think that will help people to see flowers differently but bloom tv is just absolutely amazing because it has brought so many people from all over the world um, who have this passion and it's just crazy to see how we're like all in the same wavelength I think what you were saying about vibrating how we vibrate is just different because we see beyond you know just a bouquet of flowers so yeah yeah it's not it's not about you at that point it is about the fluidity and the interaction with nature and us and mm -hmm. in this as i've said a million times monica so brilliantly brilliantly put it in her restoring eden video flowers are the gateway drug to nature and mother earth right and and uh um drug not being the derogatory mm. uh, version but but really just that thing that once you're in it and once you do accept their beauty and their their calling and their messages it is addictive like mm -hmm. i've got flowers next to me on this table right here and that was not something happening to me a year ago and right. so, such a neat thing thank you so much for what you do in the world share with everybody how they can find you so you can reach out to me through Instagram or on my website, figure8events.com. My Instagram handle is also figure8events, all spelled out. Um, those are my two most used uh, ways to reach out to me. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'm on all the other social media platforms as well. <laughs> <laughs> but just just type in figure8events and they figure will find you. Mm -hmm. Good. Awesome. Well, it was so great spending time with you. I love your passion. I love your story. And thank you for sharing it with us and, and our viewers. Uh, I can't wait. I'm genuinely excited about the lessons you've learned from the flowers and, and inspiring people to listen more to that calling as well. So thank you for thank being you. here.
Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk to you soon, Teresa. Okay, talk to you later. We have built the world's first flower-focused streaming network, bringing the public educational and entertaining shows that highlight the magic of flowers. Learn how to heal through flowers, cook with flowers, design your living space to reflect nature, make crafts using florals, sustainably garden, and so much more. We are your network for all things floral. Join us at Bloom TV as we help bring beauty to the lives of people and the planet through nature's most beautiful creation, the flower.